Hello, it's David Dillard from Sleep and Sinus Centers of Georgia, and I want to talk a little bit today uh, about um, reflux and uh, sleep apnea. Um, and um, we do a lot of sleep apnea surgery, and we do a lot of sleep apnea therapy, and so we see a lot of people who've got sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is basically that you stop breathing at night when you should be breathing, meaning your oxygen's down, you need to take a breath but you're not there. So um, the, the gist of it is, is that um, there's a heavy correlation that's been known for a long time with sleep reflux and sleep apnea. Um, there is there are some new surgeries that are out, so there's a lot of new attention on sleep apnea. Um, CPAPs have gotten a lot better, so uh, if you have been advised to have a CPAP in the past, um, the, uh, and you couldn't tolerate it, maybe a new look at it is reasonable. There's some new dental devices that can be used. Um, but one of the areas that gets overlooked a lot is um, reflux. And the reflux um, is acid coming up from the stomach. And just think of it as vomiting in small amounts. And, um, and so one of the things that we find when we test people is that if they're not getting better for other um, uh, for, for sleep apnea from other therapies that you can test for reflux and usually it's going to be there and it's going to be there at a higher than normal uh, amount. There's a certain amount of reflux that's normal um, but um, that is a, uh, a, an element that you need to talk to your doctor about and you need to think about testing for it. There's some minor um, simple office devices that can be used to screen for it that are very good and you'll see people in the office we've seen people that have had 120 times the allowable amount of acid um, into the airway and so a lot of reflux changes that you'll see are swelling in the voice box you'll have people who are feeling like a lump in their throat dry mouth really bad breath um, that doesn't seem to come from either sinuses or, or other things and these are some signs that you may have reflux, heartburn, obviously. Um, and these are items that you should need to go back and just discuss with your doctor. So um, if you are treated for reflux, one of the things you need to be aware of is that you probably don't need to be on extended long-term uh, proton pump inhibitors without an extended discussion with your doctor because that can lead to you having an increased risk for gastric uh, polyps or increased risk for esophageal cancer or osteoporosis. So, um, the, um, the short of this is that there are some available tests so they can determine whether or not you're adequately treated. There are some um, non-medication therapies that you can use. You want to avoid chocolates and tomatoes and spicy foods. Um, you want to keep the head of your head bed elevated at night. Um, you want to drink nothing but water if you have reflux. Well, for that matter, if you have sleep apnea, if you want to follow a reflux diet, which also includes low fats and not eating late at night, these are going to be helpful things. And then elevating the head of the bed when you sleep, roughly about that much. You want at least 15 to 30 degrees. And those things will help. So um, hopefully this is helpful for you. If you look up on the internet, uh, reflux diets and um, med uh, the medical and lifestyle managements for reflux diet, I think you'll find that that should be helpful for you. And um, hopefully uh, this has been useful for you and we'll see you next time.